In keeping with the tradition that President has over the past year has seen fit as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines to yearly attend the commencement exercises of the country's prestigious and elite military academy, the Philippine Military Academy located here at Baguio City. Rival honors for His Excellency the President. Full gala uniforms. The honor cadets of the Philippine Military Academy accord to the President arrival honors. As in a short while, we shall be starting with the program proper of the graduation ceremonies of the Philippine Military Academy. The President himself has paid tribute to this ideal that is embodied here in the Academy itself. We too join the Filipino nation in also paying tribute on this occasion to the grad students of this year's Philippine Military Academy. They are accompanied by Cadet First Captain Clemente G. Enrique, Regimental Commander of the Cadet Corps Armed Forces of the Philippines. Tripping the line is a traditional method of allowing the guest of honor to view closely the troops honoring him. At the same time, it allows him to observe the state of training and morale of the troops. In Trooping the Line, there exists a mutual understanding between the troop commander and the men of the ranks, that utmost observance of discipline and respect for one another shall prevail. Military Academy, an academy that has over the years stood for the ideal of excellence. And it is this pursuit of this ideal that has given this academy its great prestige. President Marcus acknowledges the honors accorded to him by the honor cadets of the Philippine Military Academy upon his arrival here to attend their graduation ceremonies for the year 1983. For the members of the graduating class, 
there could not be a more nostalgic nor more exhilarating moment for it marks the entrance of the class of 1983 into the long gray line. Our guest of honor is the President of the Republic of the Philippines and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand Edeline Marcos. We would also like to acknowledge this presence of the First Lady, Madame Imelda Romualdez Marcos, Minister of Human Settlements and Metro Manila Governor. For the life indeed of a soldier is a continuous life of obedience, continuous life of service. The values of courage, of loyalty, of strength, the deeper values of faith, and above all of valor, have been part of the training that he has undergone and part of the future life that he will be undertaking. Superintendent of the Philippine Military Academy, Brigadier General Jose Maria Carlos Zumel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, shortly will be presenting the graduates. Proud parents and members of the family of the graduates for this year are also here to attend the commencement exercises for their sons, who for the past four years have undergone very rigid academic and military training in this academy to see the realization finally of their being able to graduate and be awarded a commissionship in the major divisions of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. It is a day which usually every parent looks forward to, made especially so because of the quality of the education and the training here at the academy itself, and because of the high standards that it has inculcated in the students themselves. Four years of hard work and finally completion and finally the graduation ceremonies this morning. <laughs> From the grad stand, the cadets of the lower class uh, information. With the unified command, a display of precision, of skill, of uniformity in receiving the orders as we view this with awe and admiration as this has usually been part of the ceremonies that we witness whenever we have graduation ceremonies with the cadets and full formation. the many hours of training that go into this when you have the different squads in front of the grandstand moving with precision, with uniformity, with absolute skill and timing. But as we were mentioning earlier, this is but the physical aspects of the actual discipline that go into the Glorious 
in many ways we view them. Indeed, it's a life of utmost discipline, a career which has proven service to country, to the constitution, to the government, above service Ladies itself. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency President Ferdinand Edwin Marcos. The brief traditional gesture of trooping the line by the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces as emphasized earlier is one way by which the President could observe closely the discipline of the men in the ranks and all of those information to accord due honor not only to him but all the distinguished guests on the occasion of this commen commencement exercises this morning now, here at the Philippine Military Academy grounds. A change. The first class cadets are turning over the reins of leadership to the PMA Matikas class of 1983, this is the last act. The graduating cadets has almost completed its stay in the academy. The members of the class have survived the rigors of cadet life and have mastered the challenges of being a cadet. But life must go on, and cadet life for the class of 1983 must eventually end. Class of 1983 will turn over the reins of power to the PMA Maharlika class of 1984 and the members of the new first class, proud but humble, firmly accept the reins of power. They take over the leadership of the Corps, firmly resolved to carry on the grand tradition of those PMAers who have gone before them. And they know that with the aid of Divine Providence, the members of class of 1984 will in one year's time be on the same field, passing on the reins of leadership once more. Explain there is one of the most significant and symbolical acts in the graduation ceremonies a turning over the reins of leadership from the graduating class to those who shall be assuming the leadership in the core.
approaching the grandstand of the waiting cadets of the female Matikas class of 1983. Immediately front of the grandstand now, we have the graduating class of the Philippine Military Academy for the year 1983. This is the moment that every cadet looks forward to, the graduation ceremony. Class of 1983, 192 strong. 
Brigadier General Jose Maria Carlos L. Zumel, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Superintendent of the Philippine Mil Military Academy, presents the graduates to His Excellency President Ferdinand E. Marcos. The graduates of Class 1983 of the Philippine Military Academy. Proudly they stand here, as indeed they have reason to be proud. Four years of close discipline, of training in academics and military service have brought them to this highlight of their career in the military service. Their graduation from the academy in the beginning of their life in various aspects of responsibility in the military service. The four years culmination of his education the power of career. In me, I hereby declare you graduates of the Philippine Military Academy and confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Brigadier General Jose Maria Carlos Mill confers the Bachelor of Science degree. Of the degree. Defense Act as amended. You are uh, hereby commissioned second lieutenants or ensigns in the regular force of the armed forces of the Philippines as of this day. Mangyari taas ang kanang kamay at sumunod sa panunumpas at katungkolan. Ako si, sabihin ang pangalan ng tirahan na itinalaga sa katungkulan bilang pangalawang tinyente o insin ay time team na nanunumpa Natuto pa rin kong buong husay at katapatan sa abot ng aking kakayahan, ng mga tungkuling ng aking kasalukuyan katungkulan, at ng mga iba pang pagkaranitoy gagampanin ko sa ilalim ng Republika ng Pilipinas, na aking itataguyod at ipagtatanggol ang saligang batas ng Pilipinas, na ako'y tunay na nananalig at tatalima ako rito, na susundin ko ang mga batas, mga utos at mga dekretong na pinaiiral ng mga sadyang may tinakdang, may kapangyarihan ng Republika ng Pilipinas. At kung sa kong babalikatin ang pananagutang ito ng walang anumang pasubali o hangarin umiwas. Kasyanawa ako ng Diyos. Congratulations. The administration of the oath of office by General Fabian Siver, Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Ferdinand Edralin Marcos, President of the Republic of the Philippines. On the occasion of the 1983 graduation ceremonies of the Philippine Military Academy, we shall now hear the commencement address of President Ferdinand E. Marcos. Uh, General uh, uh, Sumel, Prime Minister Savirata, the uh, Minister of National Defense, Minister Juan Ponce Enrile, the Chief of Staff, General Fabian De, Vice Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Fidel Ramos, Major Service Commanders, Officers, Men, Cadets, Graduates of the Philippine Military Academy, Ladies and Gentlemen. Commander of the Troops, may I give the troops stickers pahinga. Of course, uh, I forgot to greet the First Lady and uh, Governor of Metropolitan Manila. Of course, he was included among, the, in the term, my fellow administrators of government. In keeping with a tradition, hallowed in the long and proud history of this academy, I come here once again on behalf of our people to honor and welcome those of the Cadet Corps who today enter into the nation's service in our armed forces. You are the 17th graduating class of this academy whom I am personally privileged to salute as president and commander-in-chief. And incidentally, yours is the biggest number yet for your number 192. And while there is something that corresponds to duty in my being here today, I must say that I am also exceedingly pleased to be here, proud and delighted to take part in these immemorial rites of graduation here at the Philippine Military Academy, the cradle of the leadership of our armed forces. This rite of passage is but a moment, fleeting and unique, and the march of the years that go into the training 
the molding, the study of the member of the corps, even longer years that will form the life of a professional soldier. But while the moment lasts, it signifies for each of us something to cherish and remember always. For our young graduates, this moment bears a deeply personal meaning and import. And you will ever remember this as the culmination of the long years spent in study and training at this academy. This academy that is dedicated to one ideal, the ideal of excellence. If it is for you a deeply personal one, it is also, in another sense, an event of national meaning and importance. For we mark by this ceremony the continuity of many things we hold dear in our country. The continuity of the institutions and ideals, the continuity of leadership and the learning and the service of national goals and purposes, the continuity of every generation's commitment to the fulfillment of national greatness and the attainment of our people's destiny. Nowhere, perhaps, is this theme of continuity more jealously guarded and nurtured than here in the Philippine Military Academy. In a record of service that now spans 78 years, we have seen this institution grow from the beginnings as police training school in the Santa Lucia barracks in Intramuros, Manila, into our premier military school here in Baguio City, we have seen it turn out year after year men of exceptional skills and com commitment to people, commitment to the flag, commitment to the republic and to the constitution, commitment to the country for the vital task of leadership in the armed forces. And we have seen it hold up the pride in pride before the people, the three words so sacred to the core, courage, integrity, Loyalty. We do not always readily recognize or remember how this faithful link between training and leadership constitutes so important a part of national vitality and strength. Some of us tend to think sometimes that leadership for a nation and for its many institutions is largely a matter of accident and luck. Yet in truth, no nation could ever hope to advance or prosper unless it dedicates part of its time to the conscious training of the young for the tasks of leadership. It cannot hope to even survive and endure unless it holds before itself a vibrant mission of the continuity of its life and purposes with a continuing source of leadership. In a world full of many cares and irritation, in which crises pile in with every turn of events. The need perhaps now more than ever for learning and reason to illuminate the tasks of leadership. Filipino leadership must be guided by this kind of light that comes from the conscious effort to learn and to prepare for duty or else we shall ever be in danger of stumbling in our course toward the future. Our institutions of learning serve us in this vital way in providing this continuity of leadership for our country. And it is here in this academy where we have developed most fully this link between learning and leadership in the attention and care that we focus in the preparation of men for the task of command in our country's armed forces. Where in the other cares of the nation's life, training, you might say, is only broadly focused on the larger goal of leadership. Here, in the Philippine Military Academy, we train and nurture for nothing else but this leadership and command. We do not really unconsciously graduate from our universities any future presidents and statesmen, but here, in this academy, we mold and train and motivate the cadets for the task of military leadership. Here, we build the generals of tomorrow. Here yeah, the choices of careers are made early, and once they are made, everything thereafter is an effort and a struggle to learn and to imbibe the wherewithal for military command and leadership. 
A young man may wish and aspire for this charge, but in the end, the process of training itself decides whether he may enter or not. He may pass or he may fail the rigors of training. This all depends on how much of himself he will bring into meeting the demand of becoming a soldier and an officer. This all depends what real gifts he has, what qualities of character he truly possesses. In the end, if he makes it through the course, he will have become a soldier and an officer and a gentleman, worthy of command in our armed forces and worthy of our people's trust and worthy candidates for leadership in our armed forces of the Philippines. To choose, therefore, this career and not another is to embrace an uncommon challenge to which many are called and only few are chosen. It is to prefer a life of effort to a life of ease. It is to profess a love of country that is above and beyond the platitudes in which we sometimes understand the term. It is to entail at the outset a sacrifice of many things, comfort, wealth, fortune, among others. And it is above all to embrace a calling for which the greatest sacrifice may well be asked, one's very life and honor itself. Therefore, that in the years training devoted to one's membership in the cadet corps, the three words, courage, integrity, loyalty, stand high above the many virtues we strive to inculcate and nurture in every would-be officer. Our armed forces need all of these. These are almost homely terms nowadays, whose meaning have been devalued by cliché and cynicism. But to the Philippine Military Academy cadet, these are of the very essence of his life, the soldier's life and his faith. We nurture courage first because it exemplifies the fundamental challenge and test a soldier must meet. It is not in itself merely bravery in the face of the enemy or danger, nor is it just the fortitude to die decently when life must be placed in hazard or in combat. Perhaps most truly it is the grace to live manfully. Many things have been said and written about this virtue. But let me turn to a man in uniform, General George Patton, who described it as follows. And he once said, if we take generally accepted definitions of bravery as a quality which knows not fear, I have never seen a brave man. All men are frightened. The more intelligent they are, the more they are frightened. The courageous man is the man who forces himself, in spite of his fear, to carry on. And the trials of battle that are finally the most supreme test of all, courage is the difference that make for the might of armies and the survival of nations. The Duke of Wellington has said that the British soldiers at the Battle of Waterloo were not braver than Napoleon's soldiers. They were only braver five minutes longer. But that made the difference between victory and defeat. Of course, Napoleon himself succinctly caught the fleeting dimension of courage when he said, the difference between an outstanding soldier and an ordinary one is audacity. A soldier without audacity is a poor soldier indeed. The second of these virtues you live by is integrity. And this encompasses for the PMA cadet all that he understands of honor, sincerity, honesty, and candor. In its generic sense, integrity is wholeness and pride of self for which a man will brook nothing rather than suffer injury to his sense of honor. This we take care to nurture in the training of our soldiery because by this quality we attach much that brings strength and cohesion to a military organization. No military force can possibly thrive without a strong code of honor to guide and keep its officers and men together. And we prize, thirdly, the virtue of loyalty in the code of our professional soldier. By this we mean to encompass all the loyalties that soldiers live by and jealously guard. Loyalty to one's comrades and superiors. Loyalty to organization of which one is part. Loyalty above all to the flag, to the country, to the constitution, and to the people. 
In the soldier's code, loyalty is wedded to the virtue of discipline and obedience in the hierarchy of command of the armed forces. For this is so because the soldier's fealty ought never to admit of doubt or hesitation in the stresses of crisis or combat and danger. From the loyalty of comrades to one another and the ability of commanders to count on the loyalty of his men arises the sense of security of armies and that form of security which they in turn confer on entire nations and republics. When one reflects on the many qualities that we look for in our society and particularly in the officer corps of our armed forces, it goes without saying that we are asking for much and for which our people cannot possibly make returns when they are given. We set a high price for the responsibilities of military command and we can only return for the service and dedication freely given the lasting pride and admiration of our people and our nation. Why is it therefore that at all times and all places in our country's history and in the history of so many other nations and peoples again and again this call to service is heeded and answered by the best of our manhood. I believe that this is because there is in the profession of arms a challenge and an opportunity unique and unparalleled for men to live a life to the fullest and in the most noble way. It provides an instance in which personal virtue can be joined magnificently with the very life of a nation and a people. It affords us a chance to live and fight as may be for a cause greater than ourselves. Not all of us are cut out for the rigors of a soldier's life. Yet, when the very life of our nation is endangered, many of those who had never dreamt of becoming soldiers will not scruple to offer their service to people and country, modest as that service may be. We have seen this time and again in our country's history and never more vividly than during the last World War. This is the profound connection which the civilian has with those few who by choice dedicate themselves to a soldier's life and man the ramparts of the national defense, even in times of peace. And this is to say that the bond we feel with our soldier between our people and our armed forces is a vivid sense of pride in ourselves as a people and as a nation. And around these are built the loyalties we bear to one another. We speak of national ideology nowadays. The essence of it is really the convergence of these loyalties around a common vision of the nation and the people we can be and the practical measures that we must undertake toward this its fulfillment. That ideology encompasses the pride we take in being this nation and not another, in being Filipino and not any other nation. It is the pride we proclaim before the peoples of our past achievements, of our peoples and of their sacrifices, the patriotism, the valor and the heroism of our forebears. And it encompasses the dreams and aspirations we dare to entertain of our national destiny that by our own efforts and sacrifices we can indeed build for ourselves a nation worthy of those who have come before us, of all of us who live today and of those who will come after us tomorrow. Such a face is nowhere better exemplified than in our men in uniform, whose lives are every moment dedicated to the vigil over the security and well-being of every man of the Republic as routine. Among them, this cause lives on day in and day out, often in anonymity because by this our nation abides and endures. Having known myself the demands of a soldier's life, the challenges of command and the perils that often must be faced. I can say perhaps that I understand what it means to dedicate one's life to the profession of arms. The world may have turned over many times, as General MacArthur said, since the days when I was called to the color and since I surrendered my uniform for the cares of public office. But some things do not change, in spite of the flux and turn of events. And one of these is the faith of the soldier in his service to people and country. Let me tell you then what I might have said if I had been asked 
When I was an officer, a young officer, exactly what was I fighting for? If you were us, you who have graduated and are now officers of the armed forces of the Philippines, what are you fighting for in our military forces? It is no different, I think, from what I would have said. There is no difference with your entry now into the military service. And if you were us, probably you would answer in the same way. You would probably say, I am an officer of the armed forces of the Philippines and as such, I am a leader of men. Being a leader of men, I pledge to act as one without pettiness or weakness, without regret, without avarice. I believe that I am descended from free men who dreamt of peace, but who were willing to fight for and die for their liberties. I believe that more than any other, I, a soldier, am burdened with this legacy of courage, especially in time of danger. And so I must be brave where others flee and flinch. I believe that all our struggles lead to greater freedom in all its dimensions. I therefore believe that in the performance of my duty, I must deny myself the comfort of ordinary men and the burden of affluence. I believe that when I go to battle, I have the strength of a hundred men because the cause for which I fight is right and because my heart is pure. I fight the side of God and on the side of my people. I believe that ever since, that if for any reason God should decree that I die in combat, although I may disappear, my fighting faith will live and will live forever in the hearts of my people. And I believe that my life is wedded to those of my countrymen with their fortunes and their destiny. Thus I must so live and conduct my, this life of mine with integrity and valor so that those who follow me will themselves serve my people and country in the same manner. I believe that the profession of arms that I have chosen is an indispensable weapon for the protection and preservation of the Republic, the Constitution and the flag, the freedoms that they stand for. It must be something which shall always submit to duly constituted authority and their policies. I believe that democracy is the form of government which is vouchsafed by divine providence for our people and which meets with the culture of our people. And therefore, I am our people's soldier. In fulfillment of my charge, I pledge not only my life, my fortune, but also my honor. This then would have been my answer if I had been asked, and I am certain this is your answer now. Our people wish you no better vocation than this, and you could wish for no greater riches and rewards. Congratulations, thank you, and good day. We shall now have the awarding of the diplomas to the 192 graduates Kelvin of the 1983 Cadets of Marotta Philippine Gino Military Gino. Academy. For graduating number one in the graduation merit roll of class 1983, the 1983 Presidential Saber given by His Excellency Ferdinand E. Marcos, President of the Republic of the Philippines, is hereby awarded to Irvin B. Gumban. For graduating with the highest overall rating in academics, the 1983 Prime Minister Saber given by His Excellency Cesar E. A. Virata, Prime Minister of the Republic of the Philippines, is hereby awarded to Ervin B. Gumban. <laughs> Emeraldo C. Magnaye, Magna Cum Laude, Bawan, Batangas. For graduating number two in the graduation merit roll of class 1983, considering overall performance in all prescribed courses of studies and activities for four years, the 1983 Minister of National Defense Saber, given by Honorable Juan Ponce Enrile, Minister of National Defense, is hereby awarded to Emeraldo C. Magnaye. Roderick A. Luna, cum laude, Mataas na Kahoy, Batangas. <laughs> Alexander C. Ignacio, cum laude, Quezon City.
Severino Vicente T. David, cum laude, Capas Tarlac. Sani L. Gadot, cum laude, Iloilo. Victor Emmanuel B. Custodio, cum laude, St. Ignatius, Quezon City. Samuel D.G. Sailim, Pangasinan. Ronald Joseph S. Mercado, cum laude, Cebu. Rolando E. Asuncion, Pangasinan. Jose Pepito H. Balibalos, Jr., Dawis Bohol. Edgar R. Pagliorina, cum laude, Haro Leite. Carlos F. Quita, cum laude, Manila. Rodelio V. Santos, Pasig, Metro Manila. Romeo G. Gan, Santa Maria, Pangasinan. Virgilio A. Hernandez, cum laude, Batangas. Henry S. Ranyola, Jr., Naga. Eduardo M. Año, cum laude, San Mateo Rizal. Joel Victor V. Canapi, cum laude, Solana Cagayan. Roman A. Felix, Tugigarao, Cagayan. Andre P. Tanyag, Taguig, Metro Manila. Florentino P. Manalastas, Jr., Quezon City. Oscar Raimundo F. Alvina, Nabua, Camarini Sur. William M. Melad, Metro Manila. Roberto G. De La Rea, Quezon City. Arnold M. Quiapo, Santa Ana, Manila. Asher A. Dolina, Palo Leite. Jerry D. Duazo, Sorsogon. Enrique J. De La Cruz, Bacoor, Cavite. Conrado V. Para, Jr., Lipa City, Batangas. Perfecto O. Kilikot, Jr., 
Tagbilaran City. Dennis P. Canoy, Santa Ana, Laguna. Jefferson C. Almazan, Caloocan City. Noel L. Felesia, Cubao, Quezon City. Silvan G. Hakaban, Naga City. Romeo M. Lastimosa, San Luis, Batangas. Aleto Jeremy E. Mirazol, Cebu City. Andre M. Costales, Jr., Baguio City. Dante M. Villanueva, Quezon City. Angelito S. Coronel, Angeles City. Mary L. County, Victorias Negros Occidental. Gizmo V. Agulan, Manila. Jesus A. Fernandez, Calasiao, Pangasinan. Juanito B. Vanyo, Tanhay, Negros Oriental. For being the member of class 1983 who has excelled in the field of athletics, the 1983 Athletic Saber, given by Brigadier General Ernesto H. Bueno, retired mayor of Baguio City, is hereby awarded to Juanito B. Vanyo. Gerardo F. Barrientos, Jr., Olomolok, South Cotabato. Manuelito R. Ancheta, Moncada, Tarlac. Joel T. De La Cruz, Tarlac, Tarlac. Petronio A. Retirado, Negros Occidental. Andrelino G. Colina, Negros Oriental. Amadeo F. Azul, Jr., Matnog, Sorsogon. Manolito P. Orense, Metro Manila. Bernie L. Crisostomo, Quezon City. Rolando M. Aquino, Panan Botolan, Zambales. Loreto T. Spinelli, Cavite. Freddy B. De La Cruz, Aklan. Luis M. Tuazon, Jr., Tondo, Manila. Leo A. Marzan, San Juan, La Union. Restituto T. Santos, San Rafael, Bulacan. Prudencio Tam T. Banyas, Haro, Iloilo City.
Alvar A. Barbo, Iloilo. Librado B. Moog, Quezon City. Virgil F. Bombita, Camarines Sur. Primitivo P. Gopo, Leite. Norman Oliver E. Febiar, Quezon City. Alfredo H. Rabena, Quezon City. Daniel P. La Chica, Bulacan. Mayoralgo M. De La Cruz, Bulacan. Domingo B. Pascual, Jr., Bulacan. Joey C. Hautea, Arevalo, Iloilo. Honorato Daniel P. Donato, Baguio City. Daniel M. Peña, Jr., Quezon City. Ronilo V. Quebrar, Bacolod City. Felix Berto S. Lagiwid, Baguio City. Isagani S. Yako, Negros Oriental. Isagani P. Silva, Lipa City. Edwin M. Makay, Valenzuela, Metro Manila. Michael Beverly J. Mankikis, Tubod, Iligan City. Mansue N. Lukban, Manila. Apolonio M. Magundayao, Alitagtag, Batangas. Jaime V. Sampang, Baguio City. Manolito C. Labador, Bawang, La Union. Demócrito B. Masmela, Jr., Pampanga. Hernando Delfin A. Iriberi, Cantilan, Surigao del Sur. Miguel C. Antonio, Jr., Manila. Edgar O. Basbas, Baguio City. Francisco M. De La Cruz, Talavera, Nueva Ecija. Rovin G. Asperilla, Manila. Ferdinand P. Uzon, Quezon City. Ramon C. Reñales, Albay. Abelardo P. Villacorta, Manawag, Pangasinan. Reynaldo G. Oxan, Dagupan City. Anselmo Simeon P. P. 
Spinili, Davao City. Aurelio A. Rabusa, Jr., Fort Magsaysay, Nueva Ecija. Joel J. Magno, Quezon City. Erwin U. Goya, Rizal. Jose Erwin T. Villacorte, Bulacan. Daniel A. Lucero, Puerto Princesa, Palawan. Joey C. Sarosa, Barotac Nuevo, Iloilo. René L. Castro, Manila. Clarence C. Martinez, Cebu. Seferino Wilfredo L. Tanagan, Jr., Bagabag, Nueva Vizcaya. Glorioso V. Miranda, La Unión. Elvin E. Hermogino, Candelaria, Zambales. Allen B. Bantolo, Manila. Bernardo C. Florese, Jr., Camarini Sur. Clemente G. Enrique, Jr., Pasig, Metro Manila. For graduating as Cadet First Captain and Regimental Commander of the Cadet Corps, Armed Forces of the Philippines, the 1983 Chief of Staff Sabre, given by General Fabian C. Ver, Chief of Staff, Armed Forces of the Philippines, is hereby awarded to Clemente G. Enrique, Jr. <laughs> Hilbert M. La Peña, Paranaque, Metro Manila. Florentino S. Rasco, Jr., Quezon City. Benjamin N. Paat, Jr., Dolores Abra. Jose Pepito D.C. Galvez, Manawag, Pangasinan. Elmer C. Pabale, Laguna. René D. Ong, Metro Manila. Ricardo R. Visaya, Bacara, Ilocos Norte. Allen A. Capuyan, Butuan City. <laughs> Benedicto M. Jose, Santiago Isabela. <laughs> Cesar P. Villarín, Jr., Cebu City. Romeo L. Labador, Suyo, Ilocos Sur. Roland A. Vicente, Solano, Nueva Vizcaya. Paterno Reinato C. Padua, Maguindanao. Romeo T. Tanalgo. Fort Magsaysay, Nueva Ecija. Paul 
Pompeo M. Dario Jr., Quezon City. Ramon Mateo U. Dizon, Quezon City. Ferdinand P. Fabilina, San Marcelino Zambales. Eduardo G. Josue, Naga City. Cornelio P. Binarao, Enrile Cagayan. Wesley A. Barayuga, Cabanatuan City. Roberto C. Caldeo, Manila. Bonifacio A. Pollo, Inupacan, Leyte. Arazad P. Subong, Negros Occidental. Wilson M. Amper, Capas, Tarlac. Marben G. Silva, Cagayan de Oro City. Henry George Zenon M. Zulueta, Baguio City. Keith Arnold L. Singian, Pampanga. Rene E. Santos, Metro Manila. Alan D. Martin, Kiangan, Ifugao. Ray Anthony S. Alfabeto, Quezon City. Elmer C. Carrillo, San Quintin, Pangasinan. Melesio C. Labalan Jr., Sorsogon. Hill G. Remorin, Muntinglupa, Metro Manila. Ruben Ronaldo D. Romero Jr., Cebu City. Napoleon M. Bautista, Metro Manila. Jesse L. Cardona, Pangasinan. Alan B. Rosal, Cebu City. Jose Joriel M. Senabre, Cebu City. Arnulfo B. Junio, Pampanga. Demi T. Tejares, Antique. Sebastian C. Sigaan, Iloilo. Jose Manuel G. Paune, General Santos City. Mario B. Yanga, Holo Sulu. Diosdado G. Ramos, Candon, Ilocos Sur. Kenneth Paul P. Paglinawan, Pagadian City, Sambonga del Sur. Nestor T. Velasco, Cagayan de Oro City. Franco Sebastian T. Pan, Goa, Camarini Sur. Demostenes C. Santillan, Calumpit, Bulacan.
Dario M. Quindosa, Torrijos Marinduque. Ricardo B. Halad, Parang Magindanao. Edmundo R. Pangilinan, San Leonardo, Nueva Ecija. Alberto C. Supapo, Iloilo. Alexander F. Balutan, Nueva Ecija. Ernesto F. Buhangin, Baguio City. Danilo D. Balandra, Iloilo City. Arnulfo J. Marcos, Solano Nueva Vizcaya. Lester B. Buenaobra, Bulacan. Launglaan P. Gose, Rizal. Alan C. Gisihan, Bacolod City. Manuel S. Gonzalez, Quezon City. Roberto S. Mercado, Surigao del Norte. Dennis J. Peña, Quezon City. Robert E. Caranza, Silang, Cavite. Aguerrico G. Amagna III, Quezon City. Manuel B. Felix, Baguio City. Ronald N. Albano, Ilocos Norte. Abraham B. Bagasin, Sanchez Mira, Cagayan. Amadeo Jose C. Forteza III, Manila. Antonio L. Gumiran Jr., Tugigaraw, Cagayan. Pablo L. Liwan Jr., Mountain Province. Justo M. Iglesias Jr., Bayambang, Pangasinan. Gil J. De Los Santos Jr., Leyte. Isagani F. Henabe Jr., Pola, Oriental Mindoro. Jimmy L. Manabat, Cabanatuan City. Hill B. Levin Jr., Maluso, Basilan. Nonieto C. Cardos, General Santos City. Emmanuel C. Miranda, Isabela. Remigio C. Valdez, Pauay, Ilocos Norte. Virgilio S. Garcia, Pangasinan. Ferdinand F. Quedilla, Banga, South Cotabato. Joel D.C. Celino, Quezon City.
Henry G. Sabare, Cebu City. Roberto Q. Soriano, Bayumbong, Nueva Vizcaya. Rufino Jeffrey L. Manere, Legaspi City. Louis A. De Los Reyes, Quezon City. Marcelino J. Llorca Jr., Pavia Iloilo. The last of the 192 graduates of the class of 1983 of the Philippine Military Academy to have been awarded his diploma by the President. And for the 17th year, President Marcus has been here for the celebration of their graduation ceremonies and as the guest of honor for the commencement exercises. The rites of passage are completed. The new Regimental commander directs the troops to pass in review. As the band plays march music, the troops led by the new regimental commander passed in review before the honorary His Excellency President Ferdinand E. Marcos, the class of 1983, and our special guests. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cadet Corps Armed Forces of the Philippines passing in review before you is led by the new regimental commander, Cadet James Passis, Quezon City. His staff, June Mison, Metro Manila, J.B. Sampang, Baguio City, Alvin Chamuat, Polo Sulu, Rapi Serra Jose, Laguna, Arnold Dipakakibo, Metro Manila, Raul De Rosario, Baguio City. The Philippine Military Academy Band under the baton of Technical Sergeant Marcelino C. Alamani. First Battalion Commanding Staff, Battalion Commander Joey Merendilla, Albay. His staff, June Peros, Metro Manila, Joel Pagdilao, Ilocos Norte, Edwin Cheng, Naga City, Manny Prieto, Metro Manila, Danny Ubaldo, Metro Manila, Alpha Company Commanding Staff, Company Commander Boya Tricaforte, Metro Manila, his staff, Buboy Mourinho, Metro Manila, Ronnie Capacio, Leite, Larry Lagnada, Butuan City, Francis Alaurin, Legaspi City, 1st Platoon Leader, Eddie Maningning, Pangasinan, 2nd Platoon Leader, Bay Ibanez, Cebu City, Bravo Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Alan Rojo, Negros Occidental, his staff, Norman Gomez, Baguio City, Elmer Desena, Laguna, Ernie Ravina, Pasay City, Nandi Gabriel, Baguio City, First platoon leader, Robert Aligayu, Batangas. Second platoon leader, Ariel Patorot, Batangas. Second battalion commander staff, battalion commander Bayani Garlan, Pangasinan. His staff, Milner de la Cruz, Quezon City. Willie Jimenez, Las Piñas. Lito Domingo, Tarlac. Alan Pareño, Quezon City. June Loyal, Southern Leite. Charlie Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Gani Neres, Ilocos Norte. His staff, Jack Mutril, Quezon City. Gary Amante, Cebu. Marcos Flores, Camarines Sur. June Miano, Pagayan de Oro City. First platoon leader, Joel Enrile, Pangasinan. Second platoon leader, Arnold Dorado, Pampanga. Delta Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Bay Pascual, Laguna. His staff, Yao Munilla, Albay. Jojo Angan, Cebu City. Sinon Rilobit, Degaspi City. Nieto Urbina, Leite. First platoon leader, Moro Lazon, Ilocos Norte. Second platoon leader, Reddy Diaz, Metro Manila. Dodges is requested to stand for the colors.
Talent Commander Staff, Talent Commander Boy Cry, Quezon City, his staff, Dean Sevilla, Bulacan, Sami Hardin, Cebu City, Juna Grampa, Quezon City, Junta Gulao, Cabaratuan City, Medi Guzman, Darlap, Echo Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Ray Mutampili, Batanga City, his staff, Ray Uchida, Tambuanga, Mel Reyes, Bulacan, Raul J. Tanko, Baguio City, First Platoon Leader, PJ Basa, Isabella, Second Platoon Leader, Rainier Ijo, Paranaque, Fox Red Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Bernie Soon, Caloocan City, His Staff, Agony Adriatico, Dipolog City, Bert Kinisala, Cebu City, Bong Cantos, Los Pinas, Jerry Subida, Iloilo, First Platoon Leader, Sami Felipe, Laguna, Second Platoon Leader, Greg Cayetano, Naga City, Fourth Battalion Commander Staff, Battalion Commander Joey De Leon, Metro Manila, his staff, June Arugay, Quezon City, Bobby Lupeña, Lipa City, June Cabreros, Sabela, Joseph Klim, La Union, Boy Hintiles, Cagayan de Oro City, Golf Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Bobby Villanueva, Caloocan City, his staff, Ray Guerrero, Metro Manila, Dave Marquez, North Cotabato, Rainier Ramiro, Metro Manila, Peter Ben Morgia, Metro Manila, First platoon leader, Pete Hernandez, Batangas. Second platoon leader, Butch Bustillas, Metro Manila. Hope Company Commander Staff, Company Commander Rowan Julian, Baguio City. His staff, Greg Salagumba III, Oriental Mindoro. Danilo Galapon, Tolas. Tony Gimeo, Iloilo City. Herboy Aquino, Metro Manila. First platoon leader, Boyet Santiago, Laguna. Second platoon leader, Charles Tabo, Metro Manila. and review of the Cadet Corps of the Armed Forces of the Philippines before our distinguished guests, before the audience, before the parents, and before the reviewing class, the graduating class of 1983 of the Philippine Military Academy. Their graduation is not only an official commitment for military service, but also a personal pledge in defense of country, of the government, of the people, and of the flag. The ideals of integrity, of courage, and loyalty, which President Marcus has expounded in his address this morning, have been part of the training of this men who now join the ranks of military service in the armed forces of the Philippines. There is great significance in commencement ceremonies of this nature as they in many ways reflect the continuance of the tradition of the ideals of leadership, the commitment and the fulfillment of our men in uniform to the national objectives and to the future destiny of our country. The 78 years of the Philippine Military Academy has stood for these ideals, have trained these men to be the leading corps of leaders in the military service, conscious continuously of their effort to learn and to be of service, their dedication to duty and the importance of their training and their learning for the future career in leadership. They face the challenge now of the future, as every soldier faces this challenge. Superintendent of the Philippine Military Academy, Brigadier General Jose Maria Carlos L. Zumel, the Commandant of Cadets, Captain Jaime B. Bantolo, we thank you all for being with us here today.